The last part of the first class, uh, it is uh, less technical and more critical, if we want to say so. Because we are going to investigate, or at least uh, have some consideration about the possible impact of artificial intelligence compared with the human activities, works, social relationship, and so on. I believe that the most original part in this course is exactly in the critics, in the consideration concerning the problem of artificial intelligence and uh, architecture and urban planning, but not only. One issue which is very important to mention in this uh, uh, section of our class is this. Generally talking, what we are going to discuss, it is not only the situation concerning internet, digital life, eventually cyber architecture, virtual space, and so on. This kind of consideration was already discussed by me in the past 20 years, especially with my PhD dissertation, which later became a book, unfortunately published only in Italian. But anyway, my consideration about this topic is already done many years ago. I believe that in the last 10 or 15 years, the things changed radically, and the consideration about the virtual space and cyberspace become more mature, more technical, more refined. But basically we are at the same point that 20 years ago. There is no more consideration to add on that point. The case become more sophisticated. Probably the virtual reality reach a very high level. But we are still in the same field. 20 or 25 years ago, I remember very clear that the virtual reality was already sophisticated of course, for the time. Now, the technical quality become higher, definitely, but the sophistication of the system, it doesn't uh, become something different compared with the past. The real advancement, the real change and challenge in the last 10 or 15 years touch the process of development of architecture and in general of the human relationship. We are still in the area of cyber life, virtual life. But uh, what it is uh, really very different is the consideration about the self-generation architecture, the self-generation urban planning, the artificial intelligence. That is radically new and deserve a stronger consideration. This is why the critical aspect of this class is very important uh, in the philosophy of this course. First of all, I would like to summarize what we learned from the past uh, section of, this, uh, of the first class. In order to catch the key point in this very complex and very technical scenario. First of all, we learn that artificial intelligence is mostly a technical issue. It is full of algorithms, it is necessary to learn coding, it is necessary to learn uh, computation, hardware, software, something quite difficult. And uh, I strongly recommend for the student and for professors, and I also recommend to myself, to study deeply the coding. It is something very logic, very interesting, and definitely it deserves much more attention. Another point that uh, is quite important is uh, in the last 10 years, 15 to 10 years actually, there is a radical change in the world, what does it mean? It is something which becomes only technical. No, 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 no. I mean, it is the reflection on the technical components of the modern life into the human life, into the human world. In order to understand the situation, I think we have to consider, we need to understand which kind of change we are in front. The radical change that we are facing recently, it doesn't concern only technical stuff. The way that we are using computer, it is not simply a neutral tool to do some action. Those action and the result and also our mental process are radically modified by the tool. I believe that the world is changed not only in terms of technical stuff. It is not only the computer as a new tool, but then finally our life run as in the past. What I mean is a radical change in the human behavior. And this is quite important. This kind of change touch every aspect of our life, include the job, of course, but also include social relationships. What we learn from the past section of the class is that artificial intelligence must be based on cognition. Cognition, it means how we conceive, how we 
interact, how we imagine the world and how we interact with the world. And especially, and this is the key question, what is the reality? We learn that brain and body, it is a fundamental for every form of cognition. The way that we understand and interact and even conceive the world, it depends of our body, the structure of our body. An insect, for example, conceive the world in a completely different way because their body is different and because they have absence of brain. The problem is cognition and the extension of our mind. This is very important because if it is true that a spider or an insect or a jellyfish conceive and interact to the world in a different way that a human being, because of the structures of their body, is different, then at the same time, because nowadays we are in front of a very different world in terms of connection, connectivity, we have internet, we have a computer, we have a camera, we have a smartphone, then somehow our body, it is extended. In fact, some theorists, when they talk about computer and even internet, they are talking about an extended body. So it means that our body, it is not limited to the surface of our hands, shoulder, feet, eyes, and so on. We have a much higher potential nowadays. This one, it means that our body is an extended body. If before we have only hands and eyes, now we have a camera. If we connect our smartphone with another smartphone very far, our eyes are extended even thousand kilometers far. And for example, if we consider the idea of the CCTV, the cam uh, for security, it means that the police and the security guard, they have thousands of eyes everywhere in the city and in the world. And in um, less than a second, they can connect every part of the world with their own brain. This kind of modification, it means that our body are extended. In the past, we discussed that the spider, his body, it is extended with his web. It is exactly for the human being. In this moment, our brain, we, our body, is extended everywhere in the world thanks of internet or thanks of the smartphone. And this is a very different situation because our cognition, our understanding of the universe, our understanding of the reality radically changed. This is still not uh, artificial intelligence. This one touch only the cognition, but it become even more sensitive and even more important when we consider the artificial intelligence, because artificial intelligence somehow can be considered as an extension of our natural human intelligence. We understand that it exists weak artificial intelligence and strong artificial intelligence. And this is why I touch this point, because weak artificial intelligence or strong artificial intelligence, with all the definition, with all the difference that we want, it doesn't matter. But in both of the cases, weak and strong artificial intelligence, we are talking about as an extension of the human intelligence to the computer. Our cognition, our understanding of the reality is going to change and definitely it will change in the future thanks of this extension. So our intelligence, human intelligence, our logic, the process of what we think and how we think will be extended not in our skull but it will be extended also outside, for example, in the web or in some sophisticated machine which replicate our intelligence. Attention, I'm talking about artificial intelligence. It means intelligent, which doesn't belong to our own brain. So I'm talking about artificial intelligence with mimic, copy the human intelligence. But there is also another possibility, and this possibility touch those kind of intelligence, which is not human related, which doesn't follow the human process, but it may be exist a form of intelligence, artificial intelligence, which is non-human, non-logic, non-rational. It exists, it is very powerful, but we don't know what is it. According with my own opinion, that is a little bit dangerous because we are not really very clear what we are talking about. And then could be a challenge, but it is a reality and we have to face this kind of reality. 
the case of the software which win the champion of chess and the game of Go, it is another case. In that situation, we are not in front of a brute force because a brute force, it doesn't win the champion of chess because of creativity, because of imagination. But in the case of the game of Go, the super champion, Mr. Lee, admit that in a certain moment, one move made by the computer surprised him because this move was according with his word. So I quote, that move was beautiful. That is very important in my point of view. This changed everything. That assertion made by the super champion, Mr. Lee, in the game of Go, it is a, an historical change because what he's going to say, it is not like Kasparov, Kasparov asserts that it was simply impossible to play chess with the computer because it is in front of an endless possibility. But in the case of the game of Go, the champion admitted that that move made by computer was beautiful, surprised him. It was not in the canon. It was not in the history of the game of Go. It was something completely unpredictable, but it's not chaotic. It was based on a very precise logic, different from the human logic, beautiful and smart, and let the computer win. It was unpredictable. It is a very small step, but it's a radical step because the computer won thanks of his creativity in the game of Go. Uh, this is a very, very important. In the case of the game of Go, we are in front of artificial intelligence, limited in the game of Go. So that software can't talk, can't paint, it cannot discuss in English or Chinese or Italian or whenever. It can do anything except play Go, but it is intelligent in that field only. But this is quite normal. For example, a human being can be an excellent painter, but a disaster in terms of human relationship. Or a human being can be an excellent uh, player of chess, but a very bad uh, politician. In the case of artificial intelligence, in this moment, the play become very serious. And this is uh, why we are going to face the artificial intelligence in uh, architecture and urban planning. Because in this moment, the artificial intelligence seems to be a very promising situation for the future. I remark in the point number six in this short summary that uh, artificial intelligence may be different from the human intelligence. I repeat once again, this is a very difficult and um, a tricky problem. It's actually a real problem because we are going to face always the concept that we human, we are going to create an artificial intelligence for computer and consequentially this intelligence, it is similar to our intelligence. Better, worse, but somehow similar. It's something like we are going to create a mirror of our own intelligence. But this is not true because of the artificial intelligence can be something very different. I'll give you a very simple example. If we are going to uh, interact with a person who unfortunately it is affected by mental disease, mental illness, the dialogue, the conversation, the interaction is very difficult. Sometimes uh, when a person which is considered normal is going to interact with persons who are considered mental ill, it's very difficult uh, for us to try to understand the mental process of those people. Because of that kind of intelligence is difficult. It is based on different kind of logic, different kind of mental process. For a certain situation, we are considered normal and people who are insane are considered different. But who say so? Or who is going to discuss what is normal and what is not normal? It is very challenging. In this case, we are exactly in front of the same problem. Who tell to us that in the future, the artificial intelligence cannot be considered paranoid or schizophrenic or something else, something which we cannot classify and we never met in the past? That is, in my personal opinion, the most critical problem in front of artificial intelligence, the unpredictable result of this non-human intelligence. Artificial intelligence necessarily could be 
human likes and non-human likes. So what happens if the artificial intelligence is developed according with non-human life? I give you a very simple example. If the artificial intelligence it is developed as a bacteria or as a virus, the process of development of virus and bacteria, that is a very big problem for us. So we must be very careful about what we are going to create. Another point to summarize the previous uh, discussion concerned the role of the language, the role of the metaphor, the role of symbolization of the reality, symbol as a meaning. And then this one, it is related on the key question, what is the reality? The reality exists. It exists outside of our body, the light, the plants, this table, uh, the person in front of you. That is the reality. But how our brain process and somehow translate this reality according with our mental process, that it is a task of the language, of the metaphor, of the symbols, of the meaning. We human give a meaning to the reality, but maybe the reality has no meaning in terms of appearance, in terms of what the reality is, what the reality consists in. So the language transforms the reality into something that our brain is able to understand. This is exactly the same issue for the artificial intelligence. We have to create a language. So artificial intelligence or human intelligence or every form of intelligence must always pass through language, metaphor, symbols and meaning. That is the key steps. Then representation, computation, realization. That is also another key point that we discussed in the past section of this class. Then another point, very important, uh, we discuss about the agent and we divide the agent in simple reflex agent, sophisticated reflex agent and learning agent. And we understand that the learning agent, it is something very promising for the artificial intelligence. And we have to focus on that kind of agent. This kind of agent already exists. It is not really very sophisticated at this moment, but it may be sophisticated in the near future, but also with some challenges. The concept of autopoiesis is quite important. Autopoiesis consists in living system as active, adaptive, self-maintaining and self-individuating. And in this case, we have also the idea of self-reproducing through self-regulating strategies. So autopoiesis, it is very important in terms of human behavior, human nature, but also it is a key concept in every form of artificial intelligence because, and this is a key point, if we have artificial intelligence, necessarily we have artificial life. Then sense, adjust, Act. The point 11 in this list is very important because sensing, adjusting and acting, it is the key element in the learning agent and generally speaking in every form of artificial intelligence and artificial life. Then finally we touch the idea of machine learning which is the fundamental element for every future development of the artificial intelligence, data mining, big data, analytics. And then we touch the idea of a probabilistic process in artificial intelligence, which is the most promising situation. So artificial intelligence, not anymore like uh, brute force, a catalog of possibility. And then we choose the possibility that uh, it is uh, winning. That is a brute force, but a probabilistic process in artificial intelligence is the computer statistically analyze which one is the winning strategy, not in between everything, but in between selected area of possibility. Then we touch the idea of consciousness and creativity. And then the key concept of where the mind goes, the self follow. The self is out of our body in the case of internet and generally speaking in the case of artificial intelligence. Then the conclusion. Artificial intelligence is probably a new form of evolution. In the following slide, I want to point out some uh, impact of artificial intelligence uh, in several areas of the human life. Uh, for example, we, we can start uh, with the impact of artificial intelligence in the common behavior. In this case, I will include some consequences, not only uh, from artificial intelligence, but somehow 
uh, in the global system, artificial intelligence, cyber, virtual reality and, and everything. Because in this moment, I think that uh, there is, uh, it should not be a separation between uh, virtuality, internet, computer and artificial intelligence. It is something unique because artificial intelligence, it is uh, definitely a consequence of the computer um, uh, revolution. So the first uh, point that I want to briefly illustrate is uh, the social relationship are radically modified social interaction, it is modified. What does it mean? It means that it is clear that the computer, internet change our social relationship. It means the relationship between human to human. This is evident, for example, when we have a conference call online, when we have a chat over a social network. I don't want to mention some popular social media from US specifically, but it, this is a global trend. Every time we consider communication, not physical communication in between human to human, but the extended communication, for example, with the internet, that is a radical change which includes social relationships. It exists some software which interact with the human being and it pretend to be a human. I give you the most famous case like Siri, the popular smart application from Apple. That is a case. Siri pretend to be your digital assistant. So basically you are talking with a software which doesn't exist. In this moment, we are still not in, the, in front of artificial intelligence because we know that Siri doesn't exist. It is a software. It is not really very smart. It is simply a sophisticated switcher, nothing more. But in the future, it can become something better. For example, it can solve some of our problem or can organize our life. It can be a digital butler, for example, but is still a new form of communication, still a new form of social relationship. Another point in the common behavior is internet, artificial intelligence, all this kind of package uh, generate a different concept of proximity and distance. What does it mean? It means that in the past, it exists a very clear relationship, very clear rule, spatial rule, rule inside the space in between human beings. Now no more. Because of internet, because of uh, artificial intelligence, now I want to call the, this digital life, which include also artificial intelligence, the idea of space, the idea of distance in between human beings change radically. And uh, I give you an example. The people feel very safe behind a camera. We have some social relationship, some discussion over internet, which seems to keep the distance to zero. Even if my counterpart is very far in another continent, it seems that he or she appear on my screen, so very close to me. I even can uh, almost touch. It is, of course, an illusion. But what it is very important is the idea of distance change radically. And uh, this is quite important because in this kind of situation, something could be radically changed in front of artificial intelligence. Because if artificial intelligence becomes intelligent enough, then this kind of artificial creators could become very close to us, could be in our telephone or even in our brain. Because if we consider the case of uh, cyber, which means human being with uh, artificial intersection, one artificial hand or some chip under our skin, whenever is it, we, I don't care. In this case, this kind of proximity become even inside our body. So what happens if one artificial creator, one artificial intelligence, it is put in our brain to modify our behavior, for example, the proximity and distance become zero. Another point very important in the common behavior is the privacy become something very different. What is exactly the concept of privacy? Privacy, it is something which only belongs to me personally. No one can touch this point, a certain kind of sphere of my life. It is very, very personal. In this situation, the idea of privacy, it is quite uh, different from the past. Because, for example, our computer or our smartphone, which contain a lot of part of our life, that is not private anymore. Remember that everything you put in your telephone, it is basically public. Everyone can access it. Everyone, of course, with the right skill, uh, something like the cracker. Attention, 
Hacker, it is something ethical. Cracker, it is a criminal. Some element of your smartphone, it is a perfectly accessible by everyone has the skill to broken the protocols of your telephone. Uh, there are some uh, way to be more safe, but it's very technical and very complicated. It doesn't belong to the skill of the normal people. The privacy, which it means some element of the self, which normally is separated by other human, now may be disappear. Another point very interesting is the smartphone and the concept of ubiquity. What is ubiquity? Ubiquity is all the terms, which means people can be, can appear, can stay in different physical place. In generally speaking, the ubiquity belonged to the saint in the past. But now, thanks of the smartphone, thanks of the technology, the idea of ubiquity changed radically. For example, what happened when a political leader or an actor, it is displayed on the television in thousand and million of uh, houses. It is a form of ubiquity. It's not a physical ubiquity, but it is the image. His speech or her speech uh, reach every house of one country, for example, for some important communication. If in the past this form of ubiquity belong also to leaders and important people or actors, in this case, with the use of the smartphone, the ubiquity belongs to every single person. For example, you, with your telephone, could appear in many parts of the world during a conference call, very popular nowadays. The idea of ubiquity, it is also a radical change in the behavior of the human being. Another point, number six, the social debate, generally speaking, it is a sort of social discussion when people go into a room and discuss about a certain topic. In this case, the social debate, it is something very different because the social debate become much more public. Also, the process of knowledge, what we know, how we know is different because in the past, the social debate, it is a way to learn, for example, a class. When students come to a class and listen to the professor, that is a sort of a social debate because the student can interact with the professor, for example. And it is also concerned a process of knowledge. But now, today, with the idea of artificial intelligence, with the idea of internet, cyber, virtual, the process of knowledge change radically. Also the idea of truth. All this case, it is generated by the social media, Google, Facebook, and how the reality it is perceived. In the past, the reality it is perceived physically. I have the direct experience of a fact. For example, I visit one museum or I look a painting and I directly can feel the quality of this painting. Or I assist to a certain event, for example, a performance of musician, a concert. Then I have the perception of the reality in a direct way. But now all the process of knowledge, information, fact, art, music, and so on, all come through internet. And this is something very tricky. This point is a really, really important in my personal opinion. Because what we are going to know, what we are going to perceive, came in most of the cases from internet. And it is not normal. And it is not a neutral. I give you a very simple example. If you are searching a certain kind of information, a news, for example, what you do? Normally, you are going to a popular search engine, Google or Bing, it doesn't matter, and the list of the information that appear from the first to the last, well, that it counts a lot because it's not you personally who is going to select the information which is more relevant for your research or for your culture, but it is the search engine who select the first to the last. The search engine give you the priority, the importance, the selection. Maybe the information that for you is more useful belongs to page 120. So you will never reach that information because there are a lot of selection made by the search engine according with some special algorithms with some priorities that you don't decide. And that is very dangerous. For example, there is also a very critical point which is the self-correcting selection. When you're going to digit something in Google, for example, there is an automatic correction. So you are going to search a certain kind of sentence which is in your mind, but then the self-correction persuade you to search something a little bit different. 
which is not what you want, but is what the search engine want, or what it is more possible, more probable. This is very dangerous, because it's not the freedom of knowledge, but is somebody else decide what it is important for your knowledge. That is very dangerous. There is a very beautiful paper from a actor, which I consider a genius. It is Sasha Baron Cohen. It is a speech over internet, very famous, made in 2020, where he accused the social media to publish everything and even dangerous information. Yes, because some information are dangerous, something like the pedophilia, something like the uh, anti-Semitism, something like the racial discrimination, something like violence, something like uh, murdering. Everything it is put over internet without any censorship, without any selection. So those kind of media, they consider this form of spreading the freedom of speech. But the freedom of speech is not that. The freedom of speech is not the idea that you can say whenever you want because it is free. You must think first. And some information are basically dangerous and cannot be spread. Because people who are older, in theory, should have more critical thinking. But people who are younger, they don't know what is true and what is false, what is good, what is bad. They are learning. So this is why it must exist a sort of selection. So this is a very sensitive point. The point number six is one of the most important and most critical. In the age of artificial intelligence, the artificial intelligence or internet or search engine can decide what is correct and what is incorrect. And you cannot decide. Point number seven, it is, uh, yes, also important, but um, uh, with some consequences, but not so radical. There is a completely new process in buy and sell. When you are going to buy things in the past, you go to a shop and you trust this shop and the owner of the shop because it's better than another one. It is your personal taste. But in the modern time, uh, the buy and sell, the business over internet, the popular platform, the quality of the products, it is not decided by the owner of the shop. It is decided by the opinion of the client. And sometimes the opinion of the client is fake or it is not appropriate. I have personally seen some opinion of client which is simply ridiculous, stupid. It makes no sense at all. So the point is the business itself, it changed. And it changed not in a good way because it become massive consuming. It is a consumer not anymore client, not anymore user, but consumer. It is two different categories in the business. The process of buy-sale, it is radically different today, and it may be modified even more when the artificial intelligence become more popular. Related to the previous point seven, there is the point eight, new process in catching customers. So there is a dif difference, as I mentioned before, in between customer, user, and fun. There are some products where the people are not user anymore. Users, it means somebody who buy a product because he need. I need a computer for work. I need shoes to work. That is users. Fun, it is people who buy a specific products without the necessity of that specific brand or specific model, just because it's cool, it's fashion, it's funny. You want it because it is an emotional feeling, but it's not users. It is not a necessity. For most of the people, a very cheap computer, very ugly, very simple, it is much enough. But many people buy a specific brand only because it's cool, not for the quality. It is the love for certain kind of products is completely independent by the function that they're going to use. This element, it is strongly based on internet life. It is strongly based on marketing. It is strongly based even to the artificial intelligence contained in the search engine. I give you a very simple example. If in internet you search uh, keywords best computer ever or for example best off-road vehicle ever, what appear it is not the best off-road vehicle ever in the history. Try it appear only a selection made by big multinational corporation of the latest model in 2020 or 2019 or in the last two years. If you search best computer ever or if you search the best movie ever, it appear selection of movie made by big multinational corporation. 
try. You can try over the internet right now. Try to search the best 20 movie ever. Most of the case appear American movie, which it means European movie doesn't exist, Japanese movie doesn't exist, African or South American movie doesn't exist. Mostly are Hollywood movie, and this is impossible. So my point is the way to capture customers, the way that we think, the way that we consider positive or negative element a certain kind of situation, it is not our choice. It is a choice of the search engine. It is a choice of artificial intelligence. So our mental process are radically modified by internet. The last point that I want to mention in, the, uh, in this page, it is the total control, security versus freedom. In this case, what I'm going to say is the common behavior, which it means how we live into the space, how we interact with the reality. In this moment, it is under control by the security system, CCTV, software, GIS, and so on. I think it is partially positive, but it is also true that if it is a positive because we can be more safe in terms of security, it is also true that we are not free anymore. So it is a very ambiguous situation between security and freedom, control and freedom. And this is a way, I don't say is positive or negative, but it is an element that we have to consider in our common life. And it is even more sensitive, stronger, when the artificial intelligence go into play. Because, for example, with the face recognition, which is based on artificial intelligence and a deep neural network, in that case, the situation changed a lot, changed radically. We are completely recognized in every point where we are. Even now, in this moment, when you're looking at your computer with your webcam, you are recognized. You must cover your camera. This is very important to know. If this is uh, controlled by government, no big problem, in my opinion. But when this situation is controlled by multinational corporation, that is a problem. Another important point that we need to touch, it is the impact on communication. Communication means uh, express my idea to you and you express the idea to me by verbal language, gesture, writing, symbols, it doesn't matter. The communication in between a human being, it is modified. And this is uh, not the point that we, go we are going to discuss. But what it is more important, in my opinion, is the process, the idea of communication. That is very different. If in the past to communicate with somebody, I must write a letter or meet physically a people, that is the way of communication. And this is clear, it is a trivial. It is obvious that it is modified using the technologies. But what I'm going to discuss here, it is what we today consider as a communication. The idea itself of communication is different. The point that I'm going to say is this. If in the past communication has a certain meaning, today the idea of communication is different. For example, many people consider communication the interaction using internet, using social media. For many people, that is a communication. And there is no way to discuss about this point. What I want to mean is that communication compared with the past is different. Communication is I express my idea to you and you express to me. We express meaning. But today, sometime, the idea of communication is totally different. There is one case uh, which is a paradox, but it exists. In the past, an investor put a lot of money, uh, I remember a million of dollars, really a considerable amount of money, in a project, in an APP, in an application. This application can only do one function. It is a communication software, something like uh, WeChat, uh, WhatsApp, but it's different. Because this app only can communicate one word, which is YA, Y-A. That's it. YA is the only function of this app. And people invest money on this project. So if two of us share this app, the only message that we can express each other, it is YA. Is this communication 
No, it is not communication in traditional sense, but is a new form of communication. I personally don't like, I don't think it is very smart, but it is a new form of communication. It is a new meaning of communication. And this is what it is important today. The idea of communication, the idea of interaction, it is different. There is also a new sense, new idea of information, a new idea of knowledge. And this is a very tricky. What is information? Information, it means some message which contain meaning. For example, if I say I love you or I hate you, the simple sentence in English has a sort of meaning. So you can be happy or you can be unhappy for this sentence because it communicates one information. It is a traditional form of knowledge. But today, with artificial intelligence, internet, again, the package of uh, computer stuff, IT, the idea of information and knowledge, it is something different. For example, I ask you a very simple question. What do you know? How do you know? The difference in between truth and falsehood in the age of internet. That is a big question. I give you an example. In my personal case, I grew up in an age where the most of the information came from television, newspaper and book. There is no internet at my age. But recently, I have a difficulty to remember where certain kind of information came from. If it comes from a book, I can trust. If it comes from internet, I must radically select. There are some internet websites that say false information. But in my memory, it is very difficult to remember where the information comes from. From internet, from a book, from a friend. In this case, what we know, how we know, it is very different because I cannot remember very clear if I can trust a certain information or if I cannot trust a certain information. I promise, if I have this problem, many other people have this problem and even less clear than me. Simply because I am old. So I have a sort of background which let me think in a different way. Nowadays, the young generation, they have no question about how we know. Internet, it is the problem primary source. And it is a problem that several philosophers point out. If it is difficult to prove that a certain information is truth, the question is, please prove that a certain information over the internet is false. That is a very difficult topic. So it is very hard in the age of informatization, where everything comes from internet, to understand if a certain kind of information is true or not if it is correct or not. Can we trust? Can we not trust? That it's hard to understand. This is a problem. I don't have any solution. What I'm going to say is that there is a new form of communication, which is internet. Now, what happens is if, for example, there is a sort of malicious artificial intelligence, then intentionally spread fake news. For example, there is a very interesting case. Now there is a software based on artificial intelligence, of course, that take the face, every face, my face, your face, the, the face of the president of a certain country, it model in three dimension, it copy the voice and the joint, the facial expression with the voice. So someone can type, today I declare war to the country ABCD. And then these words become voice and this voice, it is joined with the facial expression of a certain president. It is a technology that already exists now. So what happened? You can imagine that me, I am a malicious personality. I want to create crime around the world. And with the software, I can take the face of a very powerful president around the world and I can type this word and I can put over internet. That is a critical point. This is, a, of course, is a paradox because it's very easy to block this kind of information. But in a certain case, this is not uh, easy anymore. For example, I can mimic the face of a journalist or a scholar and I can spread fake news around the world. For example, a doctor, for example, a very famous uh, military leader, for example, a, a professor or my friend or some very powerful businessman. That is a very important uh, point how we know, and the difference in between a reality, truth, and falsehood. 
The point number three, it is strictly related with the second one, the search engine. We already discussed, we already mentioned this point. The search engine can find any information and its contrary, which it means, and you can try by yourself, this is a very easy research to do. You can search a certain kind of information and then for sure you can find also its contrary. It's very famous, for example, the case of the conspiracy theory. There are a lot of websites dedicated to the conspiracy theories, for example, the flat earth, for example, the fact that the moon, it is an hologram. I even can find, and it is a very easy research, that the attack to the Twin Towers, it is made by uh, the Muppet. The Muppet show is involved in the collapse of the Twin Towers. It is over internet. I even find a website that say Jesus Christ is an alien. So all this kind of garbage, because it is nothing more than garbage, it is over internet. And you can find with a simple web engine, search engine. For me and for you, that is a clear difference in between good information and bad information. But what happens if those kind of information are in the hand of child or in the hand of people who are not very clear about what is the reality? People who has no education, no culture. The truth can become false and the false can become true. And this is why, for example, the conspiracy theory now is so popular. A very important point that we already touched in the past slide, it is how the search engine select the information. And this is a very important because in many cases, the search engine select the information according with the preference of the users. So it is a statistical. Everything now it is statistical include, for example, the translation. What does it mean? It means that the popularity or better, the priority of the information which appear after the selection in the search engine, it appear not in order of importance of, or quality, but in order about how many people select and visualize that page. So it is not according with the idea of quality, but it is according on the idea of quantity. And that is a very sensitive problem because quantity and quality, it doesn't mean anything because a lot of fast food, it is very popular. So the quantity is really very high, but the quality is very low. So it is a very critical point because what we know about a certain kind of information, it depends about the priority that that information is published. It's the same like in the newspaper, the first page, the information, the news on the front page of a newspaper, it is considered more important than the other one. So what we consider important it depends about the priority that it is visualized on the search engine. Then it is also a uh, sensitive issue, the manipulation of the information. And I already mentioned the case of conspiracy theory. The information, it is always uh, manipulated by the media. And it is very hard sometimes to understand what is true and what is not true. Because some very popular media can publish falsehood and a minority website can publish something very interesting or on the contrary. So the manipulation of the information, the change of the truth in internet, eventually even made with artificial intelligence software, it is very important. For example, the big data, it is based on this kind of problem. Everything it is published over internet, billion and billion of information and who select this information? The analytics and then the algorithm select those information. And finally, we touch a very, very delicate point, a very sensitive dark web, deep web, censorship and filters. Yes, because uh, this is uh, strictly related on our discussion. Internet, it is a priority nowadays. And I give you a very simple example. Sometimes we need artificial intelligence, very sophisticated data analytics, and there is no personal computer which is able to do those kind of calculations. So more and more, those kind of analytics, those kind of calculation, it is put over internet. For example, I have a very smart student in my team, very, very high level, very, very uh, deep into uh, computer and artificial intelligence. He is, uh, we can say he's my teacher, he is my advisor in this kind of field. And um, I mentioned to him one of my problems. When I'm doing this kind of um, movie that you are watching now, I need uh, 
uh, render the movie and I use Linux and it is uh, quite fast and um, there is no big problem but for one hour of movie it need around one hour uh, for rendering because my computer is quite limited. It is a good computer, but uh, it's still a personal computer. So he advised me to say, yes, but why, professor, why you don't do the rendering in the cloud? Why you don't use the online rendering system? You update the data, the raw material in the cloud, and then in a few minutes, the rendering is done. And this is an excellent idea. And uh, probably I will try in the future. It costs a few money, but um, uh, I, I would like to try. And this is a very common process. Analytics, big computational stuff, all inside the cloud. Very easy, very powerful, very cheap, nice. We don't need any computer. Excellent. But what happens if some malicious entity, could be human malicious or malicious artificial intelligence, manipulate the data. So during the rendering of my movie or during the analytics of a certain kind of data, the result will be modified for some malicious intention. For example, I can do analytics of some statistical data and the final output will be different. Yes, because what we are discussing here, it is not that everything is clear and honest over internet. For example, the dark web, the deep web, it is simply a nest of devil. It is a crime system. There are some software, very popular, which give us the permission to navigate, to surf in the dark web. And then there we can find everything we want. And then who give us the certainty that um, our analytics, our data, it is not manipulated inside the dark web? That is a very sensitive point. So this kind of censorship, filters, dark web, deep web, analytics, cloud system, in the best case, it is virtuous, but it may be also malicious. It is clear if the human being manipulated, but what happens if it exists a malicious artificial intelligence, which is not controlled by anyone? That is much more sensitive. The point number seven it is somehow related on the previous one, popularity versus true. This is uh, already mentioned in the great speech of uh, Sasha Baron Cohen, and uh, we can summarize this point in this element. What it is popular and what it is true is two different issues. Sometimes the true could be unpopular. Sometimes the true can be not very welcome by most of the people. And they give you a very clear example that nowadays, exactly in these days, it is uh, very popular. Because of the coronavirus, uh, the COVID-19, a lot of countries restrict the movement of the people inside and outside the country. This is a very unpopular uh, solution. It's positive. I think it's a good idea because uh, the virus in this way can be controlled. But it is very unpopular. Many people protest against this restriction of the freedom. The solution, the idea, is true, is correct, is positive, is good. It is an excellent idea, but it is unpopular. This is a typical case that demonstrates sometimes popular doesn't mean true. Many people believe that the Earth is flat. Many people believe that the astronauts didn't go to the moon. There are a lot of information which is uh, popular but untruth. For example, the magic. Sometimes those information are incorrect, but very popular. This is related on the false idea of freedom of speech. This is, for example, a very sensitive issue in some countries. Freedom of speech, it means, in the wrong understanding, that everyone can say whatever they want. But attention, that is not the freedom of speech. This is the freedom to say falsehood. Freedom of speech, it means I am free to say the truth when I need, not I'm free to say whenever I want. That is a very interesting and a sensitive point, because someone malicious can spread wrong information, something like the Second World War never exists. Well, this is not the freedom of speech, this is a crime, and uh, it can become very popular. So some information can become popular against the fact that it is false. This is a very sensitive point that in the age of internet, in the age of artificial intelligence, can become very sensitive.
One issue that have to be very clear is that internet is not artificial intelligence. Computer is not artificial intelligence. Software are going in the direction to be artificial intelligence. The idea of communication through internet, through computer, we are still not in the artificial intelligence field. But it may become artificial intelligence very soon. So the communication process through internet sooner or later will meet the idea of artificial intelligence. And then we must be very careful because we may not recognize that we are in front of artificial intelligence. It happened to me personally. One day I get a message and this message pretended to be a person. Hello, how are you? Very nice to meet you and so on. Then the conversation go on. After a few minutes, I understand that it is not a real person, but it was a software. Not very sophisticated, by the way. So somehow the Turing test didn't pass. I understand very quickly that my counterpart was a software. It's not a real human. But in the future, I may not understand that my counterpart is a software, so the Turing test is passed. And then something danger could happen. Because, for example, this software could imitate the voice or the behavior of my close friend and say, listen, in this moment your home is burned or it collapsed. Then I must run back to home to check what happened. How many people receive a fake email from banker and say that uh, you receive uh, a million, several million of dollars as a gift? That is exactly a very, very simple and very, very stupid process related on artificial intelligence. If in the past I received one letter, I can clearly understand by the calligraphy if this letter is fake or not. The communication was clear. But who tell to me that this spam is correct or incorrect? 99% of the cases, or almost 100% of the case, I can understand that it's fake, but sometimes I can't, because the fake email is well made. So I point out uh, the number 10, Turing test and the partial Turing test. What does it mean? Partial Turing test, it is a personal definition, so it doesn't exist in the literature. But I won't express. If Turing test is very clear, and I mentioned before, the partial Turing test, it means we know that we are going to interact with a machine. So we know exactly that the machine is a machine, is not human, but we accept the play. It means that we are conscious on the fact that the, we are going to interact with a software, like Siri. But somehow we believe that the Siri exists and can be used as a quasi-human. So it is a partial Turing test because we know that it is a machine, but we accept it. We think that somehow that software has a sort of intelligence. Another point that we need to discuss it is the impact of artificial intelligence and the package of uh, virtuality on the human life. Uh, that is uh, even more difficult to discuss and I want only summarize some key points, only 10, but much more can be uh, investigated. First at all, new concept of life. And this is uh, probably the most remarkable element in um, all our course, in all our discussion. Uh, yes, because if in the past life, uh, at least a human life, was a concept quite clear, the human life, it is a form of life which belongs to the human being, then we need to discuss what is life, what is human, but more or less the concept was quite clear. In this case, we have to extend the idea of life in something different. Uh, yes, because it exists also artificial life. What is artificial intelligence? It is the intelligence, human-like or something different, which belongs to the software with some specific idea, which we discussed in the past section. If artificial life, it is clear in its concept with the controversy, with the question, with the open issue, but the case of life, it is also an interesting idea. In the age of artificial intelligence, the idea of life can be changed. And if we discuss about artificial life in terms of common life, then we are wrong. I don't think that we have confused the human life or the biological life with the idea of other form of life. 
Biological life, it is one form of life. But what happens if the artificial life becomes real, like the biological life? It is possible to understand that, for example, agent, smart agent, simple agent, it doesn't matter, agent can be considered as a sort of life. And some theorists, by the way, very high level and very solid in their theory, they consider the agent as a process of real life. For sure, not biological life, that is clear, but it is still life. In this moment, when we discuss about artificial life, that is a form of possible life. And in fact, it is my firm opinion that it is a sort of evolution. So the artificial life, it may be considered a sort of evolution in terms of Darwinism, as you want, but it is a form of evolution. It is an evolution of the biological life? No, it is not. It is a new form of life. Another interesting element in the human life, it is the quantitative winning on qualitative. Quantitative, it is a quantity, numbers. Qualitative, it is how good or how bad is a certain situation. If in the past, qualitative, it is a definitely a winning, it is a very old sentence for my generation, quantity. It doesn't mean quality. Quality in my generation definitely win. The point is, nowadays, the quantity is winning strategy. For example, like and dislike over internet. Something become popular or unpopular according with the number of the people who select a positive. For example, when you choose a restaurant. For example, when you choose a product in the popular market website, Amazon or Taobao, it doesn't matter. Many people select a product according with the positive remark of the buyers. But it doesn't mean that it's a good quality because sometimes I check the opinion of the users and frankly speaking, they are very stupid. So it doesn't matter if many people select a certain product because somebody has no critical opinion, no quality in terms of the opinion. Nowadays, there is a very dangerous tendency that it seems to modify the quality in terms of quantity. It is a tendency, very clear, and in my personal opinion, that could be not very good. Quality and quantity have to be very clearly distinguished. Another point that seems to be a trivial and even uh, absurd, it is the very popular game, which is called SimCity. SimCity, it is a very interesting game over the internet that it assumed to build a virtual city with a very complex strategy. Sometimes I play, but I feel very boring. It's not um, very nice to me. Anyway, it is a very interesting game and you have to pretend to become an urban planner. You have parameters, you have uh, geography, you have um, a typology of building, factories, residential, shopping mall, and so on. You have to combine and then your city have to grow. If you have a successful strategy, this city become very big. If not, the city die. This is very interesting because uh, SimCity is not a normal game. It is a sort of uh, simulation of real city. It is a simulation of real life. It is a case where the user, architect, non-architect, common people, it doesn't matter, interact with the computer to generate some looks like city. It is not urban planning. It is not urban design. People like me who are professional in architecture and urban design know very well that SimCity is very different from the practice of architecture. Architecture is much more difficult, but the point is not this. The point is that SimCity, it is a game where it exists a very deep interaction in between designer and virtual city. And this is common for every game in a telephone or in computer. The gaming, it is probably the most strict interaction in between machine and human. So the impact of human life, it is very important because if during the discussion there is a full interaction in between people and people, if the movie or TV, it is very passive interaction for human being, in the case of gaming, in the case of computer, the interaction is very high and it becomes even more high when SimCity or other game become intelligent.
become based on artificial intelligence. And some programmers that I met in my experience, they are using artificial intelligence for gaming. So what happens when the artificial intelligence become very popular and interact even deeply, like a real person, with the human being? That is a radical change. It exists one case of an experiment promoted by, financed by the University of Umea, and it is called Digital Companion. This is a digital life. It is a digital person, so it's artificial person, which live online. It, there is also another experiment in the past of a creator, a boy, which is virtual, and he is growing. So this is a sort of design of a perfect life. The human life, it is not only biological, but there are experiments to design a perfect life, a digital life. And then we must jump to the point number five in this list. The design of perfect life imply the DNA modified organism. Yes, because if you design an artificial life, a virtual life over internet, which is, seems to be perfect, without disease, without mental illness, very rational. It is so perfect that it never die. It didn't become old. It is a very similar in the case of doctors or biologists, genetists, who modify the DNA to create the perfect human or non-human creators. So it is a very similar component because we are going to modify the idea of biological natural life into something engineered. So biological life and computational life somehow become joined together. And it is a new form of evolution. This is why in the point number one, I mentioned the case of new form of evolution, because biological life and computational life combined together generate a sort of evolution. Now, I also want to mention the idea of human computation. For example, we can calculate numbers in our brain, computer calculation and cloud computation. What happens if the cloud computation, which now is the highest in the state of art of um, IT, what happens if the cloud computation is so able to generate an artificial life? And this is the challenge. Artificial life, which can be generated by cloud computation. So, Artificial intelligence, it may be a new form of life, different from human life, different from biological life, but a life, a form of life. And as I mentioned many times, this one could be dangerous because we are not able to understand what we are going to face. Another point very important is how we think and how we act, because we assume you, me, our friend, we assume to act as a human. But in fact, our behavior, it is a radically changed by machine. For example, how we communicate in this moment to give a lecture to you. I am going to talk in front of a screen. I am going to record my voice by telephone. And after I must put everything together in a software for generating movie. And after I must upload in internet. So you, human, can watch my lesson in your computer. This is a new form of interaction, which in the past doesn't exist. How I think, how you think now is different. In the past, I think a lecture in the way that I must face student physically. But now, thanks of the machine, everything is changed. So I must think differently from the past. When artificial intelligence becomes more intelligent, everything will be much more radically modified. Then I want to point out a very famous case. Facebook is going to experiment artificial life and artificial communication, in general, artificial intelligence. But then they do an experiment of two computers that they have to talk to each other using artificial intelligence. But then suddenly the two machines start to develop by themselves a very personal form of conversation different from human conversation. As well as the popular game of Go, artificial intelligence generate a new strategy, new language, new form of strategy, interaction. Also, the two computers of Facebook, based on artificial intelligence, develop their own language. And it is exactly what I want to mean. We are not able to control anymore a possible form of artificial life. 
A very important point that we touched several times, but now we make more clear, it is the impact in between human and machine relationship. First of all, it's clear the contemporary job now cannot be separated by automation. So the human machine relationship become stronger than ever. Every kind of job now is related with automation. It is related with the computer. Another point very important is IT in general. It is in every part of our life. So it's a total pervasiveness in every aspect and area of human life, communication and so on. It is the sense of this lesson. Another point very important is the full track control by device. Our telephone, smartphone or computer, become a part of our life. We are live with the telephone in our hand. There are also cases where there are electronic implants on the human body, something like the cyber. So now the definition in between natural life and uh, artificial life become more ambiguous. What I mean is there is no anymore distinction in between human and machine. If in the past, 200 years ago, it was very clear what is human and what is machine, now it's not possible anymore to distinguish very clear. For example, the form of communication nowadays becomes strongly based on smartphone or computer. The way that architect designed architecture now, it is mostly based on computer skill. So what I mean is the machine become more and more important and our work, it is basically mechanized. In addition, our personal information is not private anymore. Privacy, it is what companies and government decide to be. Yes, because all our information, password, credit card, address, telephone number, private conversation, pictures, they are all in our telephone. If they are in our telephone, it means it can be stored over internet. It's very easy to do. So the privacy, it is still, and in general, our personal biological life, it is shared over internet. So it is machine made, it is machine based. Communication, virtual communication, virtual reality, virtual space, virtual money, virtual life. In the past, if you cancel the word virtual, that is the description about our existence. We have communication. We have a reality, we have space, we have money, we have a life. But now everything becomes virtual. In these days, it is still clear what is virtual and with what is not virtual. In the future, I believe that the two situations become much less clear. New form of humanity radically modified by artificial intelligence. And I give you the example. Agent is exactly what I mean. Agent imitate the human behavior and they are very accurate. In fact, I have a personal friend who simulate the escape during the emergency using agent, which it means these people study the behavior of real human in case of emergency, imitating the agent. So if in the past the agent imitate the behavior of the human being, in this moment what is going on is some expert believe that the agent can simulate the real behavior of human being. And finally, the human being will follow the behavior of the agent. And the point is, they are right. In fact, what is going on is the human being, in case of emergency, behave exactly like agent. So human-machine relationship become closer and closer. Point number seven, I already mentioned before, the autocorrection in the search engine. We want to search a certain kind of topic, but the software the search engine, correct our research. So we are not free anymore because of the suggestion can be very persuading. And then we can change our research according with the statistical contained inside the web search. Another point, our thought can be guessed by artificial intelligence analyze our previous behavior. It exists some experiment, by the way, quite common because it happened even today, that what we want can be imagined by artificial intelligence. I give you a very simple example. When you search something over internet, for example, in a web engine, a car, a clothes, food, or whenever, computer, it doesn't matter, immediately you can receive spam advertisement. 
This spam advertisement can be inside your email address or inside the web that you're going to search. You can notice very easily. If you search some movie, for example, or if you search some cars or clothes or dressing or food or makeup, it doesn't matter. And then finally, the day after you visit a completely different website, you have advertisement. That advertisement, it is based on the research over internet in the previous day. So somehow, internet customize your experience of website according with your personality. So our thought can be guessed by artificial intelligence. Point number nine, I mentioned also before, data mining and analytics is not under the control of human beings which it means every data mining, any result from the huge amount of data in internet cannot be controlled by human, have to be controlled by artificial intelligence. The same for analytics, which is okay, which is very comfortable, but the problem is we cannot control the process. And this is dangerous. For example, for the economy. The economy, the global economy, it is not handled anymore by anyone. It is something much more complicated than any human being can generate. So it's controlled by whom? This is a question and an important question because it concerns the life of every one of us. Countries can collapse under this situation. And this is very, very dangerous, very important. And this is even more important in terms of quantum computing because the quantum computing, which is the next step of the evolution of uh, uh, IT, it is quite uh, sensitive because it seems that we cannot control anymore the process of computation. I'm not a very expert, so I am just going to report the questions that appear in some paper over the internet. But the point is, if in the past it was very possible to control the calculation on a piece of paper or even inside a computer, in the quantum computing, the input and the output are separate. And there is no way in between to control the calculation. This is a very sensitive point because we don't have the control anymore about the process. Now we want to briefly discuss the impact of artificial intelligence and in general of internet on some key job. Number one, shop. The small shop can be completely whipped out by online shop. Online shop is cheaper, faster, better. This is a radical change because the small business will be completely cancelled. This is the clear tendency nowadays. Restaurant. The restaurant will be more and more based on the delivery system. It is definitely true that in some countries eating together is very important and it is a part of the social life. But, for example, nowadays the delivery process, for example, in China where I am now, it is really very good. So, for example, I noticed that in Taiwan there are a very popular pizza chain, quite famous in the world. They don't have any restaurant. They only have a delivery system. Then another point, key job, social analysis. If in the past, the social study it is based by physical interview. People go in the street and interview physically. I mean, they are going to interact physically. In this moment, the social analysis become more and more popular over the internet. The economy will be more and more based on virtuality. This one could include virtual money, crypto money, and so on. The payment will be more and more based on virtual money, something like Alipay or PayPal and so on. Education. Our lesson now, it is a typical case. In the past, the education, it is only in between teacher and student. This is quite clear, for example, in some classic uh, book from the past. Uh, in this case, there is always uh, a student who is willing to study by a great master and he go directly, physically in his temple or in his school and wait the benevolence of the teacher to teach him. But nowadays, for example, this movie, uh, what we are listening now, it is put over internet and everyone around the world can listen my lesson, good or bad, it doesn't matter. This is called e-learning. It has a great possibility for the future of the education. Even people without possibility to travel to the great school still can learn over internet. This is a great potentiality for the future. Security, disaster management, anti-terrorism, crime protection, government control. 
In the past, the police has, uh, for example, has a limited power to control the security of uh, a city. But now, thanks of internet and artificial intelligence, the control is very, very accurate. So it's a positive change. Information. The classic newspaper, book, journals are replaced with an immense quantity of script over internet. So every one of us, with a very simple research, can access to millions of sources for information and for scientific paper. But also, and this is the problem, there are a lot of information which is not qualified. And sometimes it becomes tricky to understand which one is good and which one is not good. Architecture and urban planning is exactly our field and we will discuss uh, more in the next slide how it is changed. Architecture, for example, can be based on data mining for the performance of the building or for the calculation or we can use the agent to self-generating architecture. And in the urban planning, again, data mining and analytics can be very useful for the social activity and uh, complex planning can generate a reactive active city, a living city based on computation. This is a very interesting situation. Also, the transportation system for the big megalopolis or cluster of city have to be based on artificial intelligence. Now we go more deep in the field of architecture and urban planning uh, in relationship with uh, artificial intelligence. In the case of the impact uh, on architecture about artificial intelligence, we have to notice uh, some preliminary point. The real conclusion will be done at the end of the class. In this moment, we can give some uh, 10 points to think about it. First of all, modernist and postmodernist architecture is ended. The cyber architecture as well, it is quite mature, so we no need to discuss about those points. The artificial intelligence and architecture, it is the new challenge in the recent days, in the recent years. There is no more traditional design, or better, architects who do the traditional design are somehow outdated. It is still possible, but it is not the most advanced process. I really believe that I like very much the traditional way of design. There are several great masters, including the Pritzker Prize, who is doing traditional design, and I don't think it will be ended very soon. Maybe it will continue for other, I don't know, 50 years or even 100 years. But what it is very important nowadays is the creation of new process using artificial intelligence and that process is quite important and very promising. Dangerous, definitely, open, unexpected possibility, but it is quite popular and quite important at least to understand what is going on. Another point very important is the artificial intelligence in architecture, it doesn't show anymore the personality, the quality, the taste, the greatness of an architect, of the single designer, but it expresses more the probabilistic and computational process. So it is not like the ancient architecture. It doesn't show the quality of the architecture, but the solution is for sure more accurate and more tailored on on the single necessity of the users or the client. If in the past a great architect can create a great masterpiece, in the case of artificial intelligence and architecture, the solution is more customized. Definitely it reaches the taste of the final user without maybe creating the great masterpiece, but it is definitely a solution which is more responding to the necessity of the users. It is very important to notice that architects probably will lose the control of the final output because it is based on artificial intelligence and computational. So the architect can only control part of the process. The computational process become integral part of the architectural design. It is not anymore like in the past that the architect can create, thanks of his skill, all the details of an architecture, but the coding will be an important part. So architect must learn coding or at least must hire somebody in the team which is very able in computational. Then architecture will be strongly based on computer, automata, technology and coding, as I mentioned before. More and more architecture become a multidisciplinary activity. So not anymore artist, painter, traditional skill which belongs to architecture, but more and more become computational. So multidisciplinary. 
because inside one office of architecture, we definitely need to have a people who are expert of 3D visualization, scanning, 3D printer, computational coding. That is very important. The training of architecture, school, the design will be completely different. If in the past it was very based on sketching, design and so on, now it becomes integral, the coding. Again, learning architecture it is not a traditional anymore. Another point, performance versus art. In the past, the artistic sense of the design become very important. For example, Frank Lloyd Wright was a great painter. Also, Tony Garnier, as well as old architects in the 19th century. They are great artists first, and then who become great architects. But now, the performance, the material part, the numbers, the quantity become really dominant element in the design. Artificial intelligence, for sure, will call new form of professionalism. The architecture will change his nature and a new job will be created. But probably where the game becomes really important, really radical, it is the impact of artificial intelligence on urban planning. First of all, there is no more relationship in between the urban planning in the modernist and postmodernist age and the new form of urban planning based on artificial intelligence. Here, in this case, we are in front of a completely revolution, completely different stuff. And in my opinion, and this is only my opinion and I remark this issue, it will be better because of the urban planning in the classic age, modernism, postmodernism, it was really not good. Urban planning in an age of artificial intelligence, it is a radical change, it is a good change, and it is the only way to realize uh, urban planning and urban design in a such high complexity situation. Because we all know that now the future of the uh, humanity will be urbanized. There is a very precise trend, um, for example, in the urban development, in the urban study, that assert that urbanism it, it will be the future trend of the human being. Been. So no more small village, no more small town, but everything will be concentrated in the, uh, in the big city and big clusters. There is no human being able to design a city with such high uh, level of complexity. So the complexity of the contemporary city call a totally new process of planning. Point number three, reactive planning. What does it mean? It means that the city react instant by instant, moment by moment. The city change. The city is a living organism. Without the artificial intelligence, the management of the contemporary city is not possible anymore. So real-time dynamic will call real-time planning, management, design. This one can be done only by artificial intelligence. There is no more in the future the figure of the urban planner uh, like uh, in the past. But there is a sort of automatism, there is a sort of, uh, again, agent, artificial intelligence, artificial entity, which is able to generate this plan according with the computational process. Also, again, the computational become part of the architectural process and it become part of the urban planning process. The complexity of the modern city, it is too high and there is no team, no person, no human leaders who can handle those kind of complexity. So artificial intelligence in urban planning is a must. Also, in the case of urban planning, as well as architecture, everything will be based on computer, automatism, technology, and coding. In the urban planning, as well as architecture, the design of city and management of the city, it will become a multidisciplinary activity. So not anymore the artist sense of the design, but it is mostly a condensation of different expertise. Like in architecture, it will be necessary a completely different process of training in the architecture field and in urban planning field. I assert, and um, many experts and many leaders support this idea uh, during my interview, during my conversation, artificial intelligence in urban planning is a radical necessity in case of mega cluster of urbanization, something like Jinjinji in China. 
and then we become more abstract because the artificial intelligence will definitely have some important impact on space. Example is the space become virtual space in the last 30 years. If in the past we have only physical space or eventually imaginative space, the virtual space on computer, for example, is some real since 1990. So virtual space, visualization, abstract space, even mathematical space become more and more important in the following years. The virtual space, for example, in artificial intelligence, it is definitely a must. Every form of artificial intelligence will become more and more inherent, connect with the virtual space. Again, the space, as I mentioned before, become more abstract and the virtual reality, it become uh, uh, the direction for every form of artificial intelligence and architecture and urban planning. The 3D visualization is one example. The 3D visualization, it is a very strong direction in the recent years and a lot of experiment and finance are spent on the 3D visualization. So my meaning is inside the um, field of artificial intelligence and architecture, virtuality, it will become more more important. Ubiquitous space, it is a very important element in the following years, also based on artificial intelligence. But what is the ubiquitous space? Space which is spread everywhere. Same space, same form of space everywhere. If, for example, today my room is very different from your room, or the space in China, it is very different from the space in Russian. And uh, for example, the architecture in uh, the past age to be very different from one country to another country. Now the space become more abstract and more standardized. Space is not more related on a specific physical location. And this one, it means that many people share the same space. For example, the virtual space. When you play game in Cambodia, in US, in Brazil, the space is completely the same. Attention, there is one important point. Artificial intelligence does not concern architecture or urban planning anymore in terms of physical space. Physical space become one of the possible consequences, but not the only one. In the past, architect and urban designer generate necessary physical space. This is the only possible consequence. But today, artificial intelligence and in general parametric design or what you want to call it, doesn't matter, the design of the space in general, it is not only direct on physical space. Again, the physical space is one possible consequence. Nowadays, space is mostly mathematical or computational, become one of the parameters of the architecture, one of the parameters of the life. In addition, space, it is controlled by algorithms. So the design of a space, of a physical space, is not anymore the center of the concerning of architect. For example, many buildings or many spaces, more general, are designed to be only virtual, to be only abstract. Artificial intelligence, even no need a physical space to be realized. It is completely computational. If you consider then the biological life must have a physical space, this is the rule and there is no contradiction on that. In the case of artificial intelligence, the space simply may not exist. Can be visual, but can be also not visual. I give you an example. If you have a virtual creatures, something like agent on your screen, you human, can watch the agent development of two-dimensional space or three-dimensional space of your computer. But in fact, an artificial intelligence, an artificial creators can be completely abstract, only numbers. So it doesn't need any visual. That is very tricky. That is very important consequence. On the contrary of the cyberspace, and this is the point number seven that we mentioned, the cyberspace assume an organic, abstract and homogeneous space. 
Artificial intelligence may include more variable form of space. The difference lies in the complexity of parameters implied in the process of calculation. And that is mathematics. For example, biological creatures live in three-dimensional space, at most in four-dimensional space. But we know very well that mathematics, we can have endless number of space, 10, 11, n space, infinite form of space. Then the question is, if we, have, we are in front of artificial intelligence, which is basically computational, then the idea of space can be based on n-dimensional space. It only depends on the parameter we put inside. So the three-dimensional space or the four-dimensional space that you and me every day experience in our life may not be the only possible space. Could be one possible consequence, but not the final consequence. So when we are going to design as an architect space in the age of artificial intelligence, we may consider n-dimensional space. And this is the last point in the impact on space. There is a radical gap in between old and new generation of design. The way that the old generation think the space is totally different from the new generation. And this is a gap that we have to consider. Then there is another consequence on the impact of the thinking. Generally speaking, the thinking process, it is more abstract nowadays because of the artificial intelligence and because of internet and because of mathematical process. Architecture and urban planning, point number two, imply traditional idea of sociality. But the sociality in the cyber world is more extended and without boundary. Cyber extend the idea of sociality. This is a radical change in the thinking process. Another point. In the artificial intelligence field, the sociality is extended to computational thinking and agent. So social, it is not in between human and human or human and animal. But human can consider a form of life also agent, which is basically mathematics. It is a formulation. It is a dynamic formulation. But it is still a mathematical issue which we consider to become alive. Generally speaking, humor and more familiar with artificial intelligence and artificial creators, agent or something else. But now, more and more, agent become part of our common life, part of our process. Siri by Apple, for example, it is this kind of stuff. We become more and more attached to this kind of software. It is a software. But in this case, we think Siri, it is a partial Turing test, as I mentioned before. So we believe, we know that is a software, but we treat him almost like a human. He become a member of our family. And this one modify our thinking. In the past, uh, urban planning, mostly it is based on sociality, how the people meet in the Greek word, agora, public place. But now the idea of social become different. There is a very clear distinction in the past in between physical community and virtual community. But more and more, the things become undistinguished, become similar. A community can become physical or virtual, but in both of the cases, we are in front of real community. Again, boundary of community, we already mentioned this point. The boundary of the community now, it is much more extended. We can communicate with the people around all the world, a different culture, and not only with my neighborhood. The community is defined by different sort of limit. For example, religious, for example, culture. For example, uh, we may have a community of people who love uh, a cartoon or who love a specific brand of um, clothes, uh, watch lovers, it doesn't matter. The community is not decided by race or religion or space uh, distance, proximity, but by the technology, by culture, by interest. Another important point is everything it is parametrized, everything become a number, everything become a quantity. So the quality become less and less important in the thinking process. Again, in the difference of impact on the thinking, quality is controlled by quantity, parameters. And I'm not only talking about like or dislike in YouTube or in Facebook or whenever. I'm talking of complex parameters. Generally speaking, the design 
of a space, but also everything we can imagine, has sort of parameters. And those parameters generate the preference of the people. So it means the people start to think in terms of numbers, in terms of quantity, more in terms of quality. For example, in the past, a good coffee, a good restaurant, it is defined by fame. Why a writer it is better than another one? Because his idea, his quality of thinking, it is better than another. But today, the success of a certain writer become by the popularity, the number of the book he sells. And then the last point, which is uh, probably the most important in this list. The probabilistic thinking become more important than the assertive thinking. If in the past there is uh, the universal truth, God is or, for example, the law of the king, it is behind any discussion. Nowadays, the probability, it is more important than the final and ultimate truth. This is probably the most important element in our discussion uh, today. There is also impact on action. For example, the process of the design and planning require no more traditional tool, pencil, paper, rubber, but on powerful computer, 3D scan, 3D printer, or the coding. So people who don't possess those technology can be out of the game. And this is, for example, a radical problem in countries which doesn't have the advanced uh, and sophisticated technology. Another point very important is architecture and urban planning in the specific field, but we can extend this discussion on other fields. The final product will be successful for sure, because the design of architecture and urban planning will be based on statistics, on parameters. There is no architect who decide the final output, the final form and organization of a building. But the final products will be generated by parameters, by computational process, by statistic and probability. So finally, there are more people who will like that specific object, specific building, simply because that building it is the output of the preferences of the users. And this is point number three, exactly the case of the famous production named Netflix. Why Netflix are so successful? Because they produce movie based on statistical analysis, not anymore by the taste of a great director or the taste of a great script or great story. It's not anymore the quality. It is not only a gambling. A movie can be very successful or a flop for unpredictable situation. But Netflix generate movie or TV series according with a very sophisticated algorithms and very sophisticated statistical analysis. So somehow it is a success which is planned before the movie. This is a very important and radical change in the contemporary life. Then the use of the city will be based more and more on IoT, big data, smartphone, computer informatization. Those elements generate data. The data will be analyzed and the performance of the system will be increased. It means that the city nowadays, today, I'm not talking about the future, but today, it is based on this kind of element. So IoT acquire data and IoT release information. There is no anymore possibility of changing this kind of trend. The contemporary city will become better and better in terms of performance because of those data. The question is, it become more pretty, it become more beautiful. No, it become more acceptable by the common users. And this is a dangerous situation. I don't want to mention in this moment. We will touch probably in the future. I want to mention three different process in terms of action. Process A, human needs, human mind, device, parametrization, internet, data mining, data analytics, action on physical environment. This is one trend, one process. Another process could be physical environment, parametrization, internet, data analytic, device, human mind, possible human needs. Process C, nature of the environment, physical or virtual, parametrization, internet, data analytics, device, influence on human action. This three process is very important. I advise you to stop the video and think more about this sequence of the idea. 
and then we, you can continue again with the next slide. These three processes are very important because, in my personal opinion, it describes three possible action, three possible interaction in between human and the computer. So please take your time and think a moment about these three processes. If you have any question, you can contact me. Finally, I want to conclude this uh, difficult part of our class in uh, what can be considered extended reality. There is a mostly question. What is the reality? From physical to virtual to probabilistic. In my personal opinion, now the reality is not anymore physical. A reality, a ultimate state. For example, like the fixed universe in the conception of Dante theological vision of the universe. There is no ultimate reality, but only probabilistic reality. And this is the point number two. Point number one and number two are very close to each other. Point number three, 3D virtual reality, extended reality, 3D touch. And the very interesting example of Da Vinci robot for surgery. A doctor can act the surgery thousand kilometers far from the patient, only thanks of this kind of virtual reality. And it is a virtual slash physical reality because a real doctor using a machine and using internet can give a surgery to a patient very, very far. So this is a radical change in my opinion because the 3D touch, the 3D virtual reality has a very strong interaction in between the two. So what is reality, virtual or real? In my opinion, we cannot distinguish anymore. Point number four, virtual life, it is based on algorithm. Is virtual life unreal? No, no, it is real because it follows the logic of the real life. We mentioned, uh, once again, the GMO, the genetic modified organism. Are they real or not? They are real, but not natural. Global, computational, is intelligence. It is another form of reality. Now, I want to simply mention, at least, I don't want uh, to analyze pro and contrary, positive point and negative point of this situation. Positive point. Number one, radical improvement of the efficiency of design and performance on the architecture and urban planning. Number two, solving radical failure of the urban planning and architecture in the modernity and postmodernity. Point number three, increase the quality of the design in terms of energy efficiency, for example, or the sustainable building. It becomes much better thanks of the calculation. Point number four, radical improvement of the possibility in the design of architecture, space, form. The architecture will be open to immense new possibility in terms of form of design and in terms of space. Point number five, the control of the project and the construction will become radically better with parametrization. Six, artificial intelligence will be a radical help and even a substitution of the unprofessional designer. Point number seven, the design of building or city with a high complexity will be radically improved. Point number eight, the contemporary city cannot be managed anymore with the traditional process of the technology. Only artificial intelligence and big data and analytics can. Point number nine, the urban planning will be based on high complexity planning and design. Point number 10, the urban planning will be based on a real time reaction of the system becoming adaptive design. But there are also some negative points, some uh, controversial issues, some danger. Number one, a progressively losses of the control of the design by human being, and this is very dangerous. Point number two, artificial intelligence is mostly computational and highly complex. Human being may not have the control of all the process. Point number three, this implies that artificial intelligence could be something out of the control of the human being in general. And if a city is not under the control of human being, that could be very dangerous. Point number four, radical change of the future profession of architect and planner. This will definitely lead people to lose the traditional job, but other jobs will be created. Point number five, new form of society, new concept of social, new form of culture. And this one is a radical change for the future. And every change could be critical. Just need to be understand. Point number six, radical question about quality versus quantity. Point number seven, 
Artificial intelligence could represent a form of evolution, and every evolution could generate unpredictable consequences, for example, chaos. What is exactly the possible artificial intelligence? Question number eight. According with some speculation, it will be something different from human intelligence, and this one could also generate the extinction of human being. Point number nine, key question of quantum computing. We don't know what is that exactly and what is the consequences. Now I list some possible book and papers and I will share with you this list. Thank you very much to attend to this first class.